Okay, so they just opened the door for me to get uh, start heading towards the mail room. I think it's probably this way. Yeah, actually, there's like a weird effect going there. I think that's kind of a hint that that's where I'm supposed to go. Oh, also, there's a nostalgia department. And yeah, communications department this way. As well as dead letters. There it is again. Our welcome message. Personal mod. Energy recovery speed plus 15%. I'm going to stick with my more health from pickups. Some undefined thing. More material. Travel costs. Week 83 report. Visited the following Nevada accommodations. Desert Sun Inn, Big Sky Motel, Starlight Motel, in and out Aztec Court, Sleepy Bear Motel, Silver Spurs Ranch, El Gato Blanco Inn, A Plus Lodge. Accommodations, 800 bucks. Meals, 700 bucks. Gasoline, 300 bucks. Mini bar, asterisk, 300 bucks. Uh, let's follow that asterisk for now. The boys in research said performing rituals may help identify any places of power. Drinking those little whiskeys is my ritual. You pay $300 for little whiskeys? I do wonder if a, mo uh, if a motel called the Ocean View is going to be found in a landlocked state, but hey, I guess I'm not paid to think, right? And for the record, I again request that you give us the budget to get two rooms each night. Agent Rowley and myself are very tired of sleeping in the same room. See you on the road. Agent L. Hines. I gotta wait to come back. Is that was that hurting me? Yeah. yeah oh yeah. Health recovery. Health recovery... Oh wait, that's the same as what I have, isn't it? It's weird. I, I wasn't expecting drops. I mean, this is like some light RPG elements. Health recovery per element pick up and they're rated as common. I'm okay with it. Just surprised. I love the way they disappear. It's so cool. Into like smoke and a prism of colors. Oh, 
That's where I'm supposed to go, so I'm not going there. More undefined reading material. I can't wait to find out what those do. Unstable area notice. Please be aware, due to recent fluctuations in the nearest control point, this area's stability has been downgraded to yellow. Reference chart. Green is stable. Yellow is low possibility of unanticipated building shifts. Orange is high likelihood of unanticipated building shifts. Red is frequent unanticipated building shifts. I can't see anything. Do I have a flashlight? They haven't certain. Uh, they certainly haven't told me about one. Jump slash levitate. I'm gonna get to levitate. Cool. <laughs> um, shoot, aim, melee. Uh huh. Shield is Q. I probably don't have that yet. Launch. Wait, evade is control. Interesting. Uh, yeah, no flashlight. Well, I can't do anything with control now, but maybe it only works during combat. Q does nothing, E does nothing right now. House memory. What? That's not the new thing. It's singing fish. <laughs> what? Mr. G Was it misspelled on purpose? Mr. Governor? I called the police, but they never come to my house. I got a problem, and you gotta send folk to fix it. I got my wife one of them singing fish on the walls. It's not a real fish. It sings when you hit a button. But it's got the devil in it. It flies around at night and sings devil songs. It says lots of cuss words. The devil got in my house because of the fish and you've got to come handle it. My wife is real ups upset. When can you come? Sincerely, Dwayne Barr. Not sure what the significance of letters being classified as dead means um but i guess they do have to classify like they want information they need to track down objects of power and odd events so they gotta research a lot of things including a lot of things like that that sound like probably nothing but they might not be nothing Let's work hard. His life is in your hands. Security guard with a freaking shotgun. Oh my god. That's a weak desk. They have a shield of some sort.
Just realized something important. If you crouch down, when you go to shoot, it automatically pops you up out of cover. Doesn't make you go back down, unfortunately. I don't know if that really is unfortunate, but yeah, very, very useful there. Weapon mod accuracy boost. Accuracy plus 5%. That doesn't seem worth it compared to plus 37% headshot damage. Alright, we could fast travel back if we wanted to, but I don't think I want to. Clearance level 2, that requires. I don't think I. I don't even think I have clearance level 1. Just look at it. 8 inches wide and capable of storing a whopping 80 kilobytes. <laughs> Stolen by our friends at the CIA, the disk held the launch codes to Soviet nukes. Uh, this is not the disk, of course, but one exactly like it. A perfect fusion of concepts vibrating in the Cold War era collective unconscious. A receptacle. It is a receptacle for dangerous energies to hone in on. And they did. We don't have the details, but when things started flying around the disk, it was transferred to us. It's an object of power. Oh, okay. Oops. Oh, and it can launch things telekinetically through the air. Uh, to date, we, we've launched maybe three dozen pencils. And once, we even launched a cup. Communications. We're on the right track. Ho ho ho, we're not going there yet. This is where we came from. Right? Oh. Why are they spawning back there? That's where we came from. Damn, that's really effective. I love that cloud.
Japanese. Why? Don't suppose I can go here now? Nope. Look at how destructible everything is. Oh my god, even the concrete! Yeah, pistol- oh no, pistol can break off chunks, but this does a lot more. That's so fucking cool. That is so cool. That might be more satisfying than rolling into barrels in Dark Souls. Right, so this is where we came from. <laughs> I hope enemies don't just like respawn if you go back and forth. Um. I think these might be open now when they weren't before. I don't know, everything changes when you cleanse the point. Yeah, I definitely couldn't get in here before. Dead letters, dead presidents. To whom it may concern, I am being contacted by the pa past presidents of the United States of America. They appear as spirit guides, giving me their wisdom. John Adams keeps saying I need to fix America, but I can't really understand him. They all have a lot of opinions. People tell me I'm imagining it, but Theodore Roosevelt showed me how to fix my lawnmower, and I don't know a thing about lawnmowers. Explain that. I have great dead men telling me about the past and the present. If you'd like to use my abilities to help run the government, please let me know. I know the White House could use me. Yours in earnest, James Bartholomew. Club Penny. Hello, avid readers. The Bureau Book Bunch will convene at the usual spot in the corner table of the cafeteria at 5 p.m. on Tuesday. Currently discussing Unless You by J.D. Brooks. Everyone should get their reviews to me by Monday before lunch so I can generate some conversation starters before the meeting. Happy reading. Penny Bartwell. I love that they research such extreme, powerful, and strange reality-bending things, and yet a lot of this stuff is just office bureaucracy and people just hanging out, having book clubs and stuff. That's cursed. I super want to make sure I don't miss anything big because, God, there's such interesting stuff all over the place. 
communications department. I already went there to the side. I think that's it. Yeah, let's head to the communications department. Wait, are the toilets destructible? The stalls are destructible. Dear God. Damn near everything's destructible. Sorry, I just really like doing that. I <laughs> ruined all the food. There's a couple solitary fibers and proteins and pistachios, though. The hell? Pneumatics is that way. Do I want to go there? There's also this upstairs. Oh, I can't actually go this way. Undefined reading. God, the animations are so great. And the game feels really, really good, too. It's always really difficult in a game to make it, uh, especially when you have third person. Um, a third person character controller kind of thing. Uh, it's really difficult to make it both look good and feel good. Because if something's going to look really good, and if you're going for realism, then that usually means something that's not very responsive. Because in reality, people aren't super responsive to movement. They don't just instantly start moving in the direction you want. So finding that balance between making something look believable and fairly realistic, but also keeping it feeling responsive is really difficult. And they've nailed it. It feels super responsive, and yet it also looks really good. Oh, look at that. Look at that sprint, sudden changing of direction. They nailed it. That's new. Don't think we can go there yet. Uh, this leads to a big place. Let's try over here first. Book Club Samson. Book Club Notes for Penny by L. Sampson. So I don't usually read a lot of sci-fi, but as far as space operas go, this was alright. The title, Unless You, could refer to a bunch of things in the book, I guess, but I thought it was a little vague and stupid. The way the characters kept throwing it around almost like a catchphrase got real annoying real fast. The best part of the story was the space battles. I sided with the fixers, obviously, because they had the coolest tech and their motives made the most sense to me. Honestly, if I had to choose between some hoity-toity flowers and guns space hippies, or a badass bunch of warriors that go around devouring planets like cheap sushi on, on a Sunday, I know who I'm picking. That scene where they invade City Planet and convert the entire population using those brain worms, and that space dogfight between those two ace pilots? Sign me the fuck up. What well, kind of ruined the whole thing for me was when my favorite character got killed not even halfway through the story by getting a battery cylinder launched into his face by a gravitational anomaly. His death didn't feel necessary at all. Isn't that what we just witnessed? Somebody get killed by a cylinder being launched into their face? Hmm. Uh, threshold kids, we already saw that. Research and records... Hiss Barrier. Oh, right. We got two new Hiss agents. We've seen the Hiss Guard, but Hiss Agent. 
The hiss manifests in human hosts in numerous ways. The most common and least intense form is seen in the many corrupted agents floating throughout the Bureau. This, the hiss agents have maintained their human appearance, undergoing no obvious physical transformation. The most notable distinction from an unaffected human is the fact that they levitate. These hiss have displayed no aggressive behavior. They only seem interested in vocalizing the strange incantation ad infinitum. Perhaps these vessels are only meant to propagate the hiss corruption like spores or Wi-Fi boosters. Or are they cocoons preparing to enter their next stage of evolution? When attacked, hiss agents disappear, perhaps entering a state of invisibility or undergoing a transformation into a purely resonant form. Research is ongoing. And the hiss barrier. The hiss resonance field is a physical impediment that is difficult to define. Hiss barriers appears as ways to impede escape or access by bureau personnel. Two methods have been discovered for lowering them. Destroy the multiple con uh, concentrated resonance sources found in the vicinity, or two, destroy the hiss entities in the area. The resonance fields seem to require support for their size and density from other non-connected sources of hiss resonance. Without the ability to draw from these sources, the barrier will fall. Does an inactive structure made of hiss resonance qualify as a conscious being? Does the distinction make any difference when considering the hiss? What does the very act of building walls to prevent our movement tell us about the hiss? To what degree is it watching and planning? Object of power. It's like the hiss of oh God. We need to cleanse it. Had a table stuck inside of me. Energy boost. Energy plus five percent. No thanks. Oh, I just run up to it and cleanse it. God, that effect looks so cool. to hear you when I'm here. It's like the channel's been changed. The board's in charge here. Their pyramids in the bureau seal. Are they really the ones pulling the strings? I'm not their director. I'm no one's director. I'll tell you to grab highlighted objects, release E to launch. Uh, I mean, I released E and it's not doing it. I guess I'll press it. Yeah, that's weird. It says release E to throw it, but no, releasing E does nothing. I have to press it again. Oh, I 
love all the particles coming off of it. It looks gorgeous. very satisfying. I wonder if the smaller ones take less energy. Nope. Don't think they do less damage either. Oh, it's locked on to a target, isn't it? Yeah, it is. You gotta kind of like aim at them a little bit, but it does lock on. Like, right there. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. Just like you wanted, right? This will help you. Oh, you can just rip a chunk out of the ground? Oh my god. Jesus. That ripping chunks out of the ground is the coolest thing ever. What can I rip chunks out of? I think it just grabs the nearest object. Even if you don't have anything selected, like if I just aim up here. Oh! <laughs> grabs it out of the ceiling! Okay, now we can comfortably explore around. Look at all those physics objects. Oh, I love this game. It is so good. Hmm. Oh, Jesus. I didn't mean to do that. I thought that might explode, so I tried to pick it up, but I accidentally did melee instead. Oops. It does explode. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, that one too. Can I get the tile? Oh, yeah. Now I'm just kind of wondering, what's the point of the gun? I mean, it certainly would be useful in, in some situations, but the throw ability seems a lot more powerful. Certainly the gun will become useless, though. No way. We don't have level 1 axes, right? Oops. Took a chunk out of something by pressing E too much.
Can I take a chunk out of this? Yes! Oh, it doesn't- it doesn't quite have, like, it doesn't quite take on the material properties of everything that you take it from, though. It's kind of just, like, generic. It looks like. Somewhat generic, at least. It's not the same color as this. Fair enough. It's already incredibly cool. Some new stuff. That was a hiss demolition expert. Oh wait, uh We also have the Ranger. The Rangers of the Bureau's well trained and well armed expeditionary forces. Their hiss corrupted counterparts are equally formidable. Prior to corruption, Rangers were trained to use a variety of weapons in order to face any threat found during AWE response or threshold exploration, including submachine guns, assault rifles, and automatic shotguns. Hiss Rangers utilize these weapons as well as the advanced tactics taught by Bureau instructors. Some are additionally outfitted with Bureau-made body armor. Hiss Rangers have no observed paranatural abilities beyond some being protected by a shielding of dense Hiss resonance capable of stopping bullets. Considering the advanced training the Hiss Rangers are capable of applying to their situation, is it feasible to consider the human mind still remains intact to some degree? Or is the Hiss able to tap into this combat training and utilize it? Further observation is required. Demolition expert. The Bureau only allows certain highly trained individuals to handle volatile materials and weaponry. Our demolition experts are instructed in the use of explosives in dimensions with distinct physical laws, making them important assets for engineering work as well as combat situations. His demolition experts are the only observed his variations to wield a specially built rocket propelled grenade that is designed to identify and track something entities once fired, making them a threat whose termination should be prioritized in combat scenarios. I find it remarkable that the Hiss restricts usage of this weapon to the Bureau personnel who train specifically for its use. What does this tell us about its behavior? Can it not pass along new information to corrupted entities? Still too many unknowns. Ah, right, we have the floppy disk now. Containment procedure must be contained in a cell with no other loose material. Description. It's an 8-inch diskette containing Soviet-era nuclear launch codes. When bound, the object allows para-utilitarians to telekinetically lift material and throw it a short distance. I wouldn't call that a short distance. It's currently bound to d -d 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 for research purposes. Stolen from a Soviet military base located in d -d -d -uh -uh -huh. the diskette contained launch codes believed to be reserved for use against d -d -d -d. after being returned to America, the diskette began throwing computational hardware at members of the decoding team. An informant in the CIA tipped the bureau off and it was requisitioned by agents the next day. Emily said that the hotline can be reached through the mailroom. Now I'm like suspicious that there's secret ways to get into places behind things that I can move. Such as... Such as that, obviously. Your 
Weapon mod. Not one I can use for this. Minus 5% projectile spread exclusive to shatter. Oops. Tomasi. Willow AWE Outcome. Re-information campaign summary of Willow AWE. National news sites have begun publishing the story of the polar bear attack on the Alaskan town. You all know I don't like to boast, but claiming that the family was killed by migrating polar bears desperate for food because their ecosystem is being ruined by global warming was a stroke of genius. Using current ecological concerns makes the public much less likely to... So another AWE behind us and the public is none the wiser. Well done, everyone. It was a strong campaign and perfectly executed. This doesn't mean we can stop monitoring for any off-message opinions, but it's looking like we're in the clear. Yeah, they mentioned things not to talk about. Prohibited, not prohibited items. Approved terminology. Words, phrases to avoid. Alaska. <laughs> Should I go? That way or this way? This way goes to the mail room. Oh, look at that. So many tubes. It's been sealed shut with foam. Why? What's... Uh, is that on the map? That just leads to the cafeteria. We've been there. And just this door is closed for some reason. Hmm. <laughs> Dang it. Locked. Maybe there's a key nearby. So there is. This must open the door. Oh my god. Oh, that is super gross. I wasn't expecting that much gore. They're like, their jaws just ripped. Suppose we have any. No, I can't change outfits here. Why can't I change outfits here? The other, the other place at Central Executive allowed me to change outfits, even though I didn't have any outfits. So I can go use the key, obviously, but I want to know what's over here. I gotta stop doing that. Really gotta stop doing that. Thank you. 
for staying up with us. Ghosts. We've had many callers over the years tell us of hauntings, voices, and other phantasmagorical phenomena. Today, friend of the show, Dr. Quincy Reagan, tells his story. Quincy. Thanks. This is something I experienced recently while staying at the Chili Pines Motel in Macon for last year's Suspicion Con. I was in room 47. The night manager, an avid listener of the program, insisted I take this particular room. Now, the manager explained that years back, the body of a man was discovered under the bed, inside that wooden border that motel beds tend to have. And the body had been there a week, he said. Guests had stayed there, sleeping with the corpse a foot below him. They only found the body when housekeepers complained about the smell. Hauntings have been reported in room 47 ever since. I happily took the room. I fell asleep pretty quick, checking under the bed first, of course. No ghosts visited me, no chilly spots or flickering lights. But when I woke up, I found myself under the bed. It was dark and stiflingly hot. Luckily, I was able to push the mattress off and crawl out before I suffocated. The night manager was kind enough to find me another room. Oh, there you have it, listeners. What we call ghosts take many forms. Quincy was brave enough to tell his story and I encourage you to keep calling and writing whenever you encounter something strange. Something you can't explain. Maybe you're seeing colors that we have no name for. Maybe your toaster is possessed. Remember, dear listeners, when no one else believes you, we do. America Overnight, we'll be right back. Two level one cards. That's generous. And now we're back here. Hold on, was there s Yeah, I haven't gone up here yet. Where is this going to? Oh! Ranger First Class Coleman. Efficiency. Minus 7% ammo cost per shot. Hmm. That's pretty good. I don't know if it's better than plus 37% headshot damage, though. How many headshots do I really get, though? Not that many. Let's go with it. Oh, that's that thing which we already listened to. Okay. <laughs> 
Hang it. Data breach. Last month, our on-site server experienced an intrusion by unauthorized users. After a thorough investigation, it was confirmed that the users only accessed a video file which contained portions of various Dr. Darling's presentations. Investigators were able to track the users through their IP addresses. The following are the confirmed identities of these users. There's some names. Definitely some Finnish names in there. Arto Kolumaki and Jaakko Saarinen. These individuals are in breach of Bureau Code 91 and have been placed under surveillance by external investigation team. Further action is pending. What are these cubes? God, they're bizarre looking. Trying to see if I can climb on top of one of them. I don't know why, but I'm just wondering if I can. <laughs> it seems I can't. Marshall, Lockdown Distinctions. Uh, pay attention, Alberto. This is the last time I'm explaining this. Internal lockdowns are manually triggered events that lock one or all of the sectors by restricting use of the sector elevator, effectively locking staff in their sector until the emergency is handled. They can only be lifted via the directorial override in maintenance once the director is satisfied that the situation is under control. External lockdowns are a bigger deal. Nothing in or out of the whole building. It's only triggered by a code red containment breach based on some complicated system that security and research slap together. It can only be lifted once the threat has been neutralized and a high clearance individual gives the system the all clear. This process is not the same as the directorial override, so stop saying so in documentation. I know it's confusing as hell. I've told Darling a hundred times to change it, but they're adamant it stays the way it is. Honestly, I don't think they even know how to change it at this point. Let's just make sure our staff understand how this mess all works, okay? What the hell is that stuff? Electrified lava or something. Is that hurting me? Oh, if I touch it, it does. Oh, God. Hidden location discovered. Cool. Oh, that looks so cool. I wonder how they made those. CGI or maybe just some live action film thing. It's mesmerizing. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do in there. Didn't it say something about an ability point discovered? Yeah, I've got one thing. <laughs> I don't know how to use it. I don't think I can use it yet. Touching it that does it or just the gas? Would making you disappear do anything? I'm sorry to shoot you, but 
You just become invisible, right? So it's fine. Okay, they kind of exploded in like a sort of bloody cloud, kind of. That's. Mm. Nope, nope, nope. I just can't go in there. There's something there, though. What is it? Is there any way I can get it? Maybe this will clear up. That might clear up once I go into the mail room and do the stuff. Perhaps. Hopefully. Um, I can heal myself at the control point. I should do that because I'm almost dead. That's not where the control point is. Hey, what's this? <laughs> oh my god, that's readable. I'm not reading this. I'll read like the first sentence. Somewhere along the line, things went weird. I'll say. Nope. Nope. That's new. Great. Oh, they teleport. If I do it just as they're throwing stuff, maybe they won't be able to dodge. No, but it does make them abandon their throwing.
I need health. Stay focused. The hotline should be past the mailroom. Can I leave the mailroom? Ooh, is this gonna hurt? Ugh. Scary. I don't wanna die. So many little dots of health. Seem like there's any material to grab. Yeah, can I go back? Um, yeah, I can. Good, because now that we've done that, I want to go back up and see if that room that had all the weird stuff in it is now accessible. Oops. That doesn't look good. Maybe I just need to run in and grab it. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh. Oh, let's finish. Yeah. It's um, a thing that you need to open, so I need to stay there and hold down F, which I barely got out of there with health, so I don't think I can do that. Like, maybe. Maybe we'll get something in the future that will allow us to, I don't know, bigger health bar, a shield, something. Okay, well, I think I'm going to end the episode here. I got to go eat and do some stuff. So... I hope you've enjoyed so far. I certainly have. I'm in love with this game so far. It looks amazing. It sounds amazing. The writing, and the animations, and the combat, and everything's fascinating. I love reading all the details. And there's a lot of details everywhere. I love it. So, hope you've enjoyed so far, and I'll be back soon. Did not mean to do that. <laughs>